All right, guys, one last final uh, topic for the final term symbols. The method of notation of the orbitals given by superscript S, L, subscript J, where these are defined as the multiplicity. S is your multiplicity defined by 2S plus 1. Now, there are two S's here. This S stands for the multiplicity. However, this S refers to the electron spin or spins, the sum of the spins. So these can go from n one half to zero or one half. If you have an S multiplicity of one, that means that your S here was zero, and then you get a singlet state. So s is equal to 1. Now if you had a doublet, then that means you have spin of 1 half, electron spin of 1 half. This gives you an s of 2, multiplicity of 2, and then likewise multiplicity of 3. If you have an s spin of 1. Now this these electron spins, these refer to electrons in the valence shell. So that's what, you, what this superscript S stands for, the multiplicity. Then your total angular momentum refers to this L. If you have zero angular momentum, the notation is L. If you have S, then your angular momentum is 1, and D is 2. and etc. Then your j is your vector sum of L and S. So this is a range from L plus 1 or excuse me, L plus S and L minus S. So again, vector sum of L plus S and L minus S. So that's what your atomic term symbol means in total. Your multiplicity, total angular momentum, and vector sum of L and S. Some examples. In the ground state, hydrogen has one electron, some spin, one half. So that means we have 2 times 1 half plus 1 for your multiplicity giving you 2. Your angular momentum is 1 because you have one electron with, a, uh, with one angular momentum. And then your j is 1 half because you do L plus S and L minus S. Then helium two electrons are paired so you have uh, no net spin so you just have one for your multiplicity you still have one angular momentum so that's still s and then you have zero for your j vector sum now this is interesting because this configuration this one s zero this is true for any totally symmetric closed shell combination that has this. So anything that has, you know, anything that will have a state uh, that has symmetrically, that has these electrons in a symmetric configuration in the closed shell will have this configuration. So that's, that's interesting for later. Uh, some some examples of what these could look like, you know, what these uh, term symbols could look like are uh, 1s, 1d. You know, you could you could envision this having 2s, uh, one half, for example, like uh, over here, what we had for the hydrogen, and then some triplet states could be 3p. This, however. This is important. 
This is impossible. A 3D is impossible. If you want, I can explain why that is later. In an additional. So Hun's rule, there are three of them, but we're going to be concerned with the first two. First rule simply states that a state with the highest spin multiplicity is the most stable. Let me repeat that again. The state with the highest spin multiplicity is the most stable. So an example is 3p. Remember, this came from 2s plus 1. So in order to get a triplet, this would have had to have been equal to 1. That's how you get 3 here. This is more stable than that. For example. So that's the first rule. The state with highest spin multiplicity is the most stable. Second rule. For a given multiplicity, the higher overall orbital angular momentum is more stable. So let's say you have the same s. You have one, you have a singlet d, and then you have, let's say, a singlet p. Excuse me, uh, yeah, single p. Where p is, well, you know what, let's, let's do, let's do a singlet s and a singlet d. The same thing, I just, I just want to do s. So, remember, s, that, that is your angular momentum of 1. And d is your angular momentum of 2. So, Hun's rule states that for a given multiplicity, so they have the same s, Multiplicity, 1 and 1. The higher overall orbital, angular momentum, is more stable. So, which one has the higher orbital angular momentum? If you chose 1D, or singlet D, you'd be correct. Let's move, in, let's move on to bonding now. If you have uh, these... This, this type of bonding occur, then this is denoted by sigma g or Gerard. This occurs when you have an even sigma bond that is symmetric about the x-axis. The x-axis, if you can imagine, is going through the bond. So in this, this direction, through the bond. It's symmetric about it because you can envision if you if you go around, then the top half matches the bottom half. So it's symmetric. However, if you had a pi bond like this, so that's for a sigma bond, sigma bond, right? And then if you have a pi bond, this is what the pi bond looks like. So you know, plus, plus, minus, minus. If you go around the z-axis, you will not find the same thing on top as you did on the bottom. So these are un and they are not symmetric about the z-axis. And uh, these two designations of Garad and un are only for diatonics. So again, Top half matches the bottom half, G, Garad, they don't match on Garad. Some interesting facts. You, you can have magnetic, magnetic properties, experimental magnetic properties, if you have unpaired electrons. So if your valence shell has unpaired electrons like this in, in the degeneracy of two for example you know two states here then this will be magnetic experimentally if it's not magnetic then that means it has paired electrons so it would, it would actually look like this in its valence shell and when they're paired there's no magnetic properties furthermore the same spin is more stable than opposite spin 
So that refers to the spin of the electron. All right, quick recap. What do we learn? Term symbols, how to write them. You have multiplicity, angular momentum, vector sum of the two. Multiplicity can be singlet, doublet, triplet. Generally, I believe I'm correct in saying this, generally the triplet state is the most stable. This we know from Hund's rule. Angular momentum, this is usually given by uh, the symmetry of the electrons and what the total net angular momentum is and your vector sums. Here are some examples of what they look like. 2s1 half for hydrogen, 1s0 for helium. This state is given for any totally symmetric closed shell combination. So anything that is you know, perfectly symmetrical. Hund's rule, two rules stating which is the most stable. Bonding, what does bonding look like? What do these terms garata and garata mean? And some facts about the magnetic properties of unpaired electrons and lack of magnetic properties for paired electrons.